Chromoblastomycosis is one of the more commonly encountered deep mycoses, and like many others, it is characterized by a blastomycosis-like reaction pattern. There is typically hyperkeratosis and very marked irregular acanthosis, accompanied by microabscess formation and granulomatous inflammation. It's readily diagnosed due to the presence of pigmented sclerotic bodies, as I'll show you shortly. This is a higher power view of the same case in which on the left you can see abscess formation with sc scattered giant cells, and on the right there is a well-formed granuloma with multinucleate giant cells. In this field, we can see the typical pigmented sclerotic bodies. These are fungal bodies which divide by septation. Chromoblastomycosis does not form buds as is typically seen in pheohyphomycosis. And this is another example, again showing abscess formation with granulomatous inflammation and small numbers of sclerotic bodies. In this case, very kindly shared with, with me by Dr. Eduardo Colonzi from the Institute of Dermatology, the infiltrate is much more granulomatous and was not really seeing suppuration at all. But on the right, again, you can see the typical sclerotic bodies. Now, chromoblastomycosis is classified along with the other pigmented um, fungal infections and is sometimes known as dermatiaceous fungi. And all this really means is that they're pigmented. And chromoblastomycosis typically divides by internal septation. And so we, we get this characteristic appearance of sclerotic bodies. They're sometimes called medlar bodies after the, their first description um, from a case reported uh, from Boston. And uh, as I've mentioned, they, the, the fungi divide by septation and they don't form a bud. And that's how you can distinguish them from pheohyphomycosis. You may rarely seen, see hyphal forms in chromoblastomycosis, but this tends to be in the crust rather than in the dermis. And there are multiple uh, species in, involved as uh, listed on the left-hand side. Chromoblastomycosis is typically seen in hot, humid, tropical and subtropical parts of the world, particularly Africa, Asia, and America, but it may be encountered in, in many other countries. And uh, the, the fungi live in damp soil and in water and on plants. And uh, what happens is the, the, uh, the patient will have become infected by perhaps from a thorn or from a twig from a, from a plant, uh, the skin gets injured and then the, uh, the, the fungi are, if you like, injected into the underlying, uh, uh, underlying skin. And as such, they're generally seen in males rather than females and particularly, particularly in farmers and other ag agricultural workers. And as you might expect from uh, trauma from, from thorns, they're mostly seen on the lower legs or on, or on the hands. And uh, lesions begin as small, small papules, but with the progression of time, they may become more nodular uh, or become very, very large verrucous plaque, plaque forms. And sometimes due to scratching, you may see satellite lesions or you can even encounter uh, lymphatic spread. And this is one of the reasons why in the late stage of chromoblastomycosis, uh, patients may develop lymphedema and even elephantiasis. Very exceptionally, uh, patients may develop squamous cell carcinoma. I'm very grateful to 
Narshad Shah for sharing the clinical in, uh, image with me and I've given a I think it's a very useful reference uh, to chromoblastomycosis uh, giving you just about any piece of information you you could ever want if you if you've liked this uh, video and would like to see more from me, I'd very grateful if you would if you could press the um, the subscription key. This won't charge you anything, but it does mean that you'll get a quick alert when I post the next video. Thank you very much.